Hi, everybody. Welcome to AITA Pod. I'm Danny Vega, joined by my producer, Lily, and our wonderful guest today, Jordan Jenkins, performer and content creator, clothing constructor and designer, repeated TikTok <laughs> viral star. But Jordan, I got to go because, you know, Lily was telling me all about you. I was getting excited, but then she goes... She'd be like, oh, yeah, this this TikTok went viral. Oh, but this was just on his, like, burner account. And I was like, I'm sorry. Is he selling drugs? I don't understand what. So you have two different TikTok presences? Yeah. Um, the community guidelines don't like me so much. So on the first <laughs> account, we, I was we about to get We were very flat as well. <laughs> right. Now, Lily was also telling me that you've made a TikTok kind of critiquing stan culture. And a stand for anyone who's kind of culturally illiterate like me is based on Eminem. He had this fan Stan. Is that is that story real? The the song Stan, and then he like killed. He was like a huge Eminem fan, and then he like wrote this crazy letter. And he, he did he really kill himself? Is that real? I don't know if that's real. That I'm not sure. But of. that's the origin of the term. But anyway, sorry, I'm getting off track here. It's a, it's I didn't a great even song. know that. You didn't know that the origin of the name no. Stan? Yeah, yeah, it's from the Eminem song. Yeah, and, and it's like a letter, and it's like you know Eminem is rapping, but then what? it goes in and out. Yeah, and then he kills himself in the song. But anyway, you criticize Stan culture, which is more about you know people who run Instagram accounts documenting where celebrities are and things like that. I didn't know people were still doing this, by the way. But yeah, what, what's your take there? Um, seek help. Yeah, yeah, find yeah. a hobby, go outside, touch some grass. Like, I think it's not that bad, but when you start, like, doxing people and, like, going up to people, like, in person if you find them, because I saw a TikTok about that, mainly with the barbs, but it's just I'm insane. sorry, I'm sorry, what? The barbs? Those are Nicki Minaj, the Nicki Minaj fans. Yeah. Oh, man, I'm really out of it. The barbs. And honestly, don't the say Taylor the barbs fans. three times in a row. Yeah, okay, they will come on. after you. <laughs> Yeah, I actually, I have a story about a uh, celebrity, Lizzo. She's uh, very famous now, but she had a rise to fame. You know, she wasn't always famous. And right when she was starting to get uh, famous, she um, complained about a uh, delivery driver. She threw it up on her Twitter. And I think the exact thing that you guys are describing happened. And the fans came for this individual and it was, you know, it was, uh, her Twitter handle. And so, you know, they, they went and got this guy's profile or this person's profile and, uh, he pursued legal action and Lizzo had to settle out of court. And the person who told me this story, you know, cause it's easy to be like, Oh, fucking Lizzo. She's unhinged, you know, but the way they, and I thought it was very empathetic. They were like, you know, they said that they thought that was a really a turning point for Lizzo because she didn't even realize herself that she had become powerful enough that if she were to tweet something like this, like real shit was going to go down. Like someone was really going to be fucked with. And they kind of painted it like it was a coming of age story for her that she then learned like, oh, I can't do this anymore. I'm too famous. <laughs> My words have gravity yeah, out exactly, of nowhere. Exactly. <laughs> I can't call someone out with a psycho mention anymore. That's not, I'm, a, I'm right. too, too high class for that. It really is wild. I mean, like, yeah, I feel like she just realized she was, yeah. I feel like in that moment she realized she was famous. Right? I don't even know that they went to court. That might be something I heard. <laughs> it might be something I made up. It doesn't really matter. What does matter, people, is that Lily has been telling me that you've got this epic story. This is, this is your viral TikTok hit. On the main account? Or the burner. Honestly, on the first account, on this the second on the account, main. and on like Woo! this is a trio. Every single one trio. of them, and it blows up every single time. All right. Well, I'm I'm thrilled to hear it. This was you worked with the manager from hell. What? So yeah, bring us in. Yeah. I got really close. I think this was like 2019. I got really close with the manager at the restaurant that I was working at. I'm gonna try so hard not to say the name, but people okay. are probably like, can you tell us what kind of restaurant life. it is? It was like Mediterranean, very bougie, upscale. Okay. Like Ooh. Joe Biden went there a few times. <laughs> Joe Biden went <laughs> there. Oh my God, this is a place. I gave him olive oil twice. Wow. Let's call it Pita Palace. Crazy. I think that could be fun. Let's call it the Pita Palace. <laughs> Definitely. But um, I was working there. I got close with him. This other girl, I can like her name's Sophie. She doesn't care. She loves. When I tell it, Sophie started working there yeah. and we just became the besties. Like I was drinking at work. I was doing whatever I want. We were all just 
cutting up. And the restaurant floods one day, and like me and him go out to um, that's not even like the worst things that happened at the restaurant. But like the restaurant flooded one day. Me and him went to go out to get drinks, and he told me after the fact that like he wanted to tell me then that he was in love with her. A few months pass. I forget what happened or like if we were closed, but he asked me to come in. He gives me a 22 page note, 11 pages, front and back. Oh my confessing God. Confessing his love. On the front, there's like a jar with an anatomical heart and a rose coming out of it. That he drew? <laughs> yes. That's yeah. like the cover page of this mm -hmm. document. And and by the way, guys, mm -hmm. you said it's 11 pages. How are the pages stuck together? Is it like stapled? Like how is it? I think it was stapled. It was stapled. I think it was stapled. Yeah. Okay. And he said this was the fourth uh, time writing the note, which is wild. Fourth draft or yeah. Yeah. So it went through a couple of revisions at least. I and mean, it could have been tightened up a little. It's a little long. I don't think it was peer reviewed. Yeah. I think we could have got some peers. Definitely not. I think I was the only one to read it. And, um... and it's double spaced or single spaced 11 pager? I think single spaced cursive handwritten. Oh, handwritten. Oh my God. Handwritten. Really went for it. So he hands you the note. I read it in my front. car. Yeah. 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 I read it in my car in shock, but he never says like, I'm in love with you. I want to <laughs> be with you. Like he, like he never says that. It's like, it's like that feeling when you keep on touching that ulcer on the inside of your mouth, there's like a special connection between us. Wow. Cause she had an ulcer and I guess they talked about it. Not my first like romantic metaphor to jump for. Babe, you know what you remind me of? I've got this itch and <laughs> it has been with me since I've been a young man. So it was Ooh. kind of like a bad, it sounds like a bad, I mean, obviously it's 11 pages, it's bad, but it he yeah. didn't really, yeah, okay. So he's talking about his ulcer. He's talking about his like mom that passed. Don't know why. <laughs> what? Wish what, is this what is this man's seduction <laughs> technique? Like what? What, <laughs> what as a girl, like a romantic interest <laughs> could she even do with that? Also, was it stapled in the corner? Did he staple it like a book, like fifteen times down? I think honestly, I think it was twice. Like okay. one Double at staple. the top, of, like yeah, it was kind of like it had a bookishness. Yeah, to bookish. It. Oh god. Like, he used to make, like, books for his kids for, like, Christmas and whatnot. So, like, this is his field. He loves doing mm. this. And um, he, like, gave me the note on a Tuesday. He gave it to her on a Friday. She reads it. We work Saturday together. He is Ooh. acting like a maniac. <sighs> He's, like, running across the restaurant, like, I need to talk to you. Can, can we please talk? She's like, I don't want to do, I don't know. Uh, Get you have a wife and two kids. You oh, just moved no. into a new house. Yeah, me and him go out to eat. No, me and her go to get drinks. We talk about it. The Saturday he gave it to her on Friday. That Sunday it was the uh, pool party where he's gonna like do his band debut because he started a band with um, one of the cooks there. <laughs> And they were going to like, this guy is that. like, you know, CEO at shitting where you eat. It's like, <laughs> let me just mix up my whole fucking life. It felt like I was Peter in a Palace. lifetime movie. Like it didn't feel real. It felt yeah. I was on ABC family. Like, okay, today's a new episode. It's episode three. What oh are we doing? My God. What was the band called? It has both of their last names in yeah, it. Oh okay. yeah. <laughs> nope. Omit. Oh, Never mind. No, like no, no, we'll no, call no. it Smith and Walensky. Okay. So we're at, so we're at the pool party. The band is playing. Uh, one of my coworkers come up to me and they were just like, this is about Sophie. And I was like, what are you talking about? Because oh I wasn't going to say that God. I knew. Everybody was thinking it. The dude that was in the band came up to me. He was like, this is about Sophie. And I was like, oh what are you talking about? No, absolutely not. Some like they end the set. He like jumps into the pool real dramatic. And my phone vibrates. I will never forget this. My phone vibrates. I look at a text. It's from Sophie. As I look at it, he calls me, like, outside, shows me the email that, like, has the managers, the owners, like, all CC'd on it. Like, <gasps> due to unforeseen circumstances, I'm quitting. He's crying. Like, on hands and knees. I'm oh sitting there with my, my like, solo God. cup. He's crying. I'm confused. My coworker walks by. She's like, oh, I know exactly what's going on here. Tuesday comes around, he takes two days off, Sophie's gone. Everyone's like, he was trying to get with her. Finally, I was like, yeah, he was. 
was Sophie wrote the letter to quit. She wrote the email. She wrote the email. Sorry. She wrote the email. So Sophie was creeped yeah. out and she's like, I'm not going to deal with this. Yeah. She uh, she was supposed to go to the pool party, but got she didn't show up. She wrote the email. Got it. Got it. She got it. She saw it with everyone else. And then I had explained to like the other managers like what was going on. Oh, man. Yeah. So then he misses and, work for two days. Mm hmm. And he comes back and like me and him are in this like weird <laughs> beef. Yeah. I mean, he, he was mad because I didn't tell him that she was going to quit. But also, like, you're my boss. Um, Literally. Literally. Loki shouldn't have gotten that close with you. My bad. But I'm just going to tell you what you want to hear. Like, do what you want. Like, do what's going to make you happy. You're over here stressing. You lost 100 pounds for her. You started a band. Like, it sounds like your mind is made up. Who am I to say? You probably shouldn't wow. do that. He lost 100 pounds for her? He, yeah, he thought he was Chris Pratt. <laughs> well, who was he really? I wish I was kidding. He has a beard. That's really about it. Guy with a beard. Wow. Mm -hmm. So he was Mr. Mm -hmm. Minnesota, basically. Like, he would, if Chris, Pratt, if Chris Pratt put something on his Instagram, I wish I was kidding. If Chris Pratt put, like, a selfie on his Instagram, he would do the same post, same everything, same face, and post it. So what? he was truly trying to emulate Chris Pratt. It's yes. not even like, oh, you know what? I transformed my body and now I'm conventionally. He truly was like, no, I must emulate this man. This is what will get Sophie to fall in love with me. This will yes. be it. Oh, my God. Yes. Because he he told me that. Like, well, like it was in the letter that he um, lost the way for her. But he, he even said. Um, what? Yeah, he just said that he lost a bunch of weight for her. 100 pounds. Basically. Over the course pounds. of how long? Like a year. A year to seven. So he had like really seven months to a year. for her for, a lot, for quite some time. How did Sophie endure yeah. over a year of just this wild behavior? That's like, so I guess she, she had you to vent to and hang out with and, like, seek like, solace for. We, we all thought we were just friends. Like, oh, this is the yeah. best work situation ever. Like, we can do whatever we want because we're close with the manager. Yeah. That wasn't the case. Apparently. He loved her. He wanted a, to run. Yeah. That's an HR nightmare. Yeah. Like, you can't. You're a manager, dude. Like, you gotta. Yeah. You gotta have boundaries. <laughs> and it was like a family owned restaurant. So, like, HR, not a thing. It yeah, was just yeah. doesn't owners, exist. And, like, yeah, they did not care at all. She was gone. Nothing happened. Like, nothing physical happened. And. That was that on that. And do you do we have any update on him? Where did he end up in all this? And where did he ended up, up sending? Uh, he ended up sending a second note like seven months after oh. to her house. <gasps> yeah, seven months. So he really held on to this. And he has a wife and kids. Still found it. And, and what was the follow up note? She never got to read it. She said she was opening it, and her mom saw her reading it because like her parents knew about it snatched out of her hands i texted her the other day and she was like still haven't read it still don't know what it says <laughs> i got i got a good inclination that it says i love you but not that exactly I, it's in his weird i metaphors. love you please don't tell my wife uh, yeah. don't ruin my life but if you want to get married i'm still down you remind me of when your car gets keyed she's like what the fuck where's <laughs> oh this going God. bro does it take seven pages to justify the metaphor um, but so Sophie doesn't know whatever happened, but yeah, I mean, this, su I mean, this sucks. So she had to, this, she was, this was sexist. Can I say that? Yeah, I think so. Well, you shouldn't yeah. in a managerial position. Yeah. I'm sorry. Like in a managerial position, it, you cannot pursue people who are underneath you. Like you just can't. Truly. I know this was a like a family yeah. owned situation that's not enforced, but like, and again, this could vary state by state. However, just like yeah. at least out here. You cannot like I couldn't at my job. I couldn't date um, one of the delivery drivers because that would be yeah. a conflict of interest. I'm their supervisor. I guess I feel like there's a power imbalance. There is a power imbalance. I guess hierarchy. I feel like it could be done. But the way this individual did it was like unhinged. The way Wild. this person went about this is horrific. Horrific. Absolutely horrific. horrific. It's yeah. beyond nuclear. So but Sophie's OK. And you're still friends with Sophie. Oh, Sophie's. Oh yeah, Sophie's starving. Me and Sophie are besties. She, we still laugh about it. Still a little traumatized, but we still laugh about it. Yeah, it's intense. I think she's a trooper. I really do. She's Incredible. the greatest. She is the funniest person ever. And 
I kind of love doesn't her. Doesn't care. I, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I think like I think this. I mean, honestly, like I've never written eleven pages. You know, it's like Sophie must be someone special. And then to be so unbothered, like still bothered, but like you know, yeah. what I mean? just like I haven't read that like thing. I'm not gonna. I yeah, think that's yeah. very right. cool. I'll she get around cool. to it. It's like, not a priority. Like for I me. think she sounds really cool. I like her. <laughs> right. No, she's she's super sick. Super sick. What a tale. Yeah, it was a good time. And I so guess. it seems to me like there was a gold, the golden age of all this though was when you thought that you three were besties, and then this was a good job, right? Because like you work at a high end restaurant. It was a great, it paid great. I yeah. was like working parties. Like it was amazing. I was yeah. pissed when it happened. Yeah. I didn't want to be there anymore, but thankfully, okay, I guess not thankfully. Thankfully, the restaurant blew up like oh. right R. I. P. before, Peter right after, yeah, right after yeah. New Year's. Woke up from my shift. They were like, mm, it's burnt down. That's it. A lot of, Stay oh, home. literally burnt down. It literally had a gas fire and blew up. Oh off. my God. And yeah. it had a flood. <laughs> The Pita Palace might have been cursed. It Pita might Palace have is been biblical. Like, Indian burial ground, biblical. There was some shit going down there. Apparently some shit went down like New Year's Eve and people were supposed to get fired the day that we were going to open. I was like, you know what? I'm just I'm just not going to go. I'm just not going to go to the place. I did go after hours and take some um, lemon sorbet out of the pastry kitchen, but I don't want to see anybody. There we go. This is what I deserve. That's a way to go out. Lemon sorbet. You got to end on the Truly. That's Truly. That's the way to do it. Well, Jordan, we're so excited to have you on the show. Um, I, I think that is truly a tale for the ages. So I'm, I'm so happy that uh, we have it here, you know? This is great. Happy to share it. Well, we got a couple of situations. Uh, pretty, pretty lighthearted app, I think, here. Because you know what, Jordan? I think you bring a chill vibe. Thank you. I did uh, take a little hitty witty before I came on. So. <laughs> hitty witty. <laughs> Our second situation for the day, folks. AITA for eating ice cream directly out of the hot tub. But first, it's AITA for taking all of my neighbor's plants. I live next to a couple whom I'm friendly with, but not much past how are you and small talk. Last week, I was out for a morning walk and noticed Amber lugging a butt ton of plants from her backyard to her porch. She said hello, so I stopped by to chat to see if she needed help. Looked like she was starting her own landscaping company. Okay. Turns out she finally inspired, finally felt inspired to work on the new garden she's been planning for months. She ripped out everything she currently had and was going to put it on the curb as freebies. I've always wanted to turn my lawn into a nice garden, so I felt like I struck gold. I offered to pay her because there was a lot of shrubbery, but she refused. I brought her some pastries as a thank you, offered cash again or to help with her new garden, and she refused, and that was that. I spent the weekend with my boyfriend replanting everything, and our backyard looks great. Yesterday, I get a knock on my door from her hubby. Turns out she struggles with bipolar and was going through a manic episode. There is no quote unquote new garden that she's been plotting for months, just a bipolar induced attack on their backyard that she now regrets. She's too embarrassed to talk to me to herself. I get it. I struggle with depression and she, and the fewer people that you have to explain yourself to the better, but she wants those plants back. Apparently that garden was her baby and in a fit of mania, she destroyed it. I'm sad for her because shitty decisions when you're in the mental toilet suck, but like everything's already planted in my backyard and I'm not willing to put in the effort to dig everything up. It'll look awful. And yeah, that's why they're dealing with now, but it's not my fault. I nicely told him pretty much that. And he just said, okay, and left. Now, when I see them, they completely ignore me. I've crossed paths with them three times since and her husband waved, but she didn't even look at me. I saw them taking soil and compost bags out of their car today. And Amber just looks really upset and not at all excited to be working on a new garden. My boyfriend thinks I should offer to give at least some of them back because I'm not exaggerating. She gave me a ton of plants. I just don't want her to think she can be rude to me after her mistake, then get what she wants. A-I-T-A. I'd be mortified if I was Amber. I would truly feel a heavy layer of shame like over my entire body. I wouldn't right? know. I wouldn't know how to approach OP. I genuinely wouldn't. I understand why she would want to send her husband just to, it would feel like softening the blow. I would take it as like, oh, my bad. Oops. <laughs> yeah. Free garden. You you're saying you would take it as an L if you were the uh the person. If I was Amber. 
If you were Amber, I totally agree with you. Yeah. I, I guess I, I feel like, look, Amber has mental health issues. I feel for her. But like, I think their best case is like, you know, can we rip it all out of your garden? But they still have a right to say no, because like you gave them those plants. They put a ton of effort into putting in the plants, to planting the plants, installing them. Truly. Sure. I also wouldn't ask if they can like dig it up themselves and bring it over if any if i was amber i'd be like i'll do it can i just have them back yes that's where i wouldn't be like please undig out your whole garden for me but yeah. is there any way that there are some like really special plants to me if i could take them yeah. out myself replant them back in my own yard because i don't know like i ma like manic episodes they can last weeks yeah like mm -hmm. you don't sleep like, you're truly, like, you're not in a good state of mind. Like, you're not in a decision-making state of mind. I can feel for someone in this situation. I think the fact that they're neighbors is one factor here. They're not friends. I think with a friend, it would be different. There'd be a lot more leeway. I'm still not going to do it for you, but I'd be like, all right, well, you're my friend. I Absolutely know you have not. your episodes. So, you know, come over here and whatever. Do what you got to do. But I also think another fact here is that this is a living thing. It's not a dog, but a plant is alive and it's not good to be planting and unplanting plants. Presumably, I don't really know, but I, I'm guessing it's not a great. <laughs> I think it depends on if it's outdoor or if it's indoor, yeah. because I know you do need to repot plants and you yeah. do need and it depends on where the roots like go. Well, yeah, but I'm pretty sure you don't want to repot a plant day after day well no know? not that and i imagine that would well you would want to do it probably fairly quickly so it wouldn't start growing into oh, the soil do you so. know what i mean no, i feel I like time would actually either. be of the essence but for me one of the factors is that op is it's less so about the plants and more so about like the perceived slight towards her some commenters were upset about her calling Amber rude top comment cat herder. I was all very not the asshole until you pulled the rude card. She's not being rude. She's embarrassed and now trying to reconstruct what she destroyed. She's gutted. She feels like shit. And while you were under no obligation to return the plants, it wouldn't have been unreasonable to meet her in the middle and let her reclaim her most precious ones. Y'all might've even collaborated on your garden. You could have had a good gardening ally. You aren't technically in the wrong, but your attitude regarding what actually happened sucks. Soft YTA for making this about you. I mean, she was being rude. Like I'm waving hello to you. We're just calling it how it is. If you're I not going to wave back, it's kind of dicky. Again, but it's like, and again, this is me. Just this is my subjective opinion. I feel like, cause I don't know. I, I, I have never been in a, in a manic state. I have been blackout drunk before and I Retweet. have been like, absolutely like morbidly <laughs> embarrassed. Of, yeah. Even, even if morbidly I didn't say, yeah, even yeah. if I didn't say or do anything, I would remember like running to my phone and like scrolling, making sure I didn't like post anything crazy, say anything <laughs> nuts, text anyone. And yep. like, so, and let's say I did, I feel like I would have a hard time navigating that in the beginning. So I couldn't imagine what it'd be like in a manic state. Listen, I ripped up my whole garden, take my whole garden. Oh my God. Like that's a hard thing to backpedal yeah. from. That's just my opinion on it. I feel like it, she wasn't yeah. trying to be rude. I feel like she was just like, I can't even bring myself to look at you. I want to crawl into a hole and die, but that's my, that's my take. No, I feel you. Yeah. Retweet. <laughs> Retweet. <laughs> I think my issue too, is that, I, I think sending the husband is actually, I have a problem with this. Do you? Yes. Because you know what? If you're blackout drunk and you go send your SO because you're so ashamed, no, oh, fuck you. Well, that, but again, yeah, that is what, but that's the difference that that's being blackout drunk in, in my capacity wouldn't be a part of like mental illness. Like she's mentally yeah, ill. Yeah, yeah, no, sure. I'm not saying they're the same thing. But I, I'm saying that you got to take responsibility for it. And if it is the case that you fall into a mania, I, I still think you need to take ownership over it. And, I, and by the mm -hmm. way, I think it's a very different, it has a very different tenor. Because it's like, listen, I have the, you're taking ownership. You're like, I have a mental illness and I, I'm forgiving of this and I understand it. But to send your husband over, it's just like, you're not really like owning it. You're you're kind of trying to sideswipe it. I, I don't know. I feel like you got nothing to be embarrassed about. If it, if it's if it's part of your condition, it's part of your condition. But I I don't really like the sending of the husband, especially. Yeah, it's like you can get me around on that side a little bit. I do get where bit. you're coming from. Deeply. Agreed. Yeah, I feel I like do. I'll be irritated if the husband came. I mean, no, I would definitely be annoyed if the husband came over without a doubt. Like, yeah, it's embarrassing. Like, it is. It is awkward, but 
At least you're saying something to me instead of trying to dance around it. Yeah, exactly. It's like she I I think she needs to overcome the embarrassment because I'm like, well, what are you embarrassed about? If you have a condition and this was from the condition, then you just say that and just say the truth. And like, I actually think it would be a lot harder for her to say no. Yeah, if, if it was coming from OP directly, exactly. as like, opposed to you know, her husband being like, this happened. Because we also don't even know that the husband could have been a real, like, blundering husband. About it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I think it just has a lot less impact, too. It'd be like, yeah, she has a condition, so we need the plants back. Yeah, as it's opposed like, to, like, a heart-to-heart. -heart. Like, yeah. uh, I'm yeah. coming to you as, listen, um, I'm laying bare over here. Something yeah. like that. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Like, I don't even fucking know you, bro. I barely even know your wife. <laughs> And now, and now I'm supposed to hear from you that, oh, well, I need to get back all the plants. Like, and, and she was the one who gave away the plants. So it's like, it's like this weird indirect game of telephone. And I just feel like I'm, I'm trying to like, cause I know some of you, oh, she has bipolar, but like, I don't feel like this is that big of a, of an ask or to make a call. I don't even know if she has to go over there. Yeah. And you can make a phone yeah. call. No, I guess I just, I feel, I feel bad, but in reality, I do a hundred percent get what you're saying because when you're mentally ill, you do have to live with it. There are things that are a lot harder for you, but you do need to own it and you need to take responsibility of however you can live your life the best you can. Exactly. Right. And I feel like with, you know, oh, I get, I'm an alcoholic. I, is that, is that a form of illness or disease? I think it is. It's a, it's, it's definitely similar in certain ways. Well, if you got blackout and did some shit, you still have to be the one to be like, I did that, you know? Top descending comment, affectionate aside, 39, no assholes here. My best friend has bipolar, and honestly, I wouldn't understand the shame that comes from the consequences of mania. I don't think OP is necessarily an asshole for thinking she was rude initially. As long as they acknowledge that she isn't rude now that they've been educated, I think OP should apologize for not fully understanding, explain why they declined, and offer to meet them halfway. It's not necessary, but it would probably help the situation a lot. But I don't think OP is an asshole, but they're slightly on the fence. I was going to say, maybe I'm tripping, but why would I have to apologize for taking the flowers? No, the flowers were offered. You shouldn't have to apologize yeah. necessarily for the taking of the flowers. They were offered. I, I know I'm, I'm like, I might get canceled on this, but I, I just feel like you don't get to throw up your mental illness card and be like, no, it's like, look, you did something you gave someone. If, if it could have been a puppy it could have been plants. It could have been whatever. Like, you don't have a right to it anymore. That's unfortunately how giving things works. So what, and by the way, what is she embarrassed about? That she tore up her whole garden? Embarrassed to who? I don't think anybody cares. This was a gift. That, to me, is a very self-centered reaction. What is she embarrassed about? Is she embarrassed that she's asking for it back? She's not even asking for it back. She's sending husband. Yeah, I think she's also, she, I think she's embarrassed about the state of her yard because there was a bit, I don't know if we mm. cut it, but that the original post said that she had no plans to she did not develop any form of plan to actually she had improve nothing. her garden. She bought a bunch of supplies, but she didn't have anything like any schematics, any landscaping stuff laid out. So now she has basically a dugout yard. So that is embarrassing. If it depends on their community, I don't know what their HOA situation is. I, I was mean, about I, to say the HOA is probably <laughs> having a field day. Right? Literally. I wouldn't be bare. I mean, I wouldn't be judgmental, though, if I had just gotten a free garden. I'd be like, well, yeah, give Amber a few days. She gave me her garden. <laughs> what? You guys quit judging, you assholes. By the way, update from OP. Read through the business y'all sent me, and I've decided I'm going to give her a $100 gift card to our local nursery and see if she wants help planning. Someone made a great point that these plants will likely be dead within a week, especially if they get moved again. Ooh, so I might have been onto something there. Yes. I'm willing to say that I like I like what OP did here. I feel that if someone is is going to, you know, if it seems real and, and they're pulling out this card, that you should try to give them some grace. Mm -hmm. I think it's kind of a big ask for a stranger, though, that they, they, you don't know that well. Yeah, small talk neighbor. Kind of heavy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I also think, let me say this, in life, whenever you're giving a big gift, kind of, and it doesn't quite feel right, or you're receiving one, it's it's kind of always a watch out moment. I, I think it can lead to a lot of issues. Yeah. I hate, like, it's so weird when, like, the wrong person gives you, like, a really big, like, a really, like, either intimate or, like, yes. meaningful or on the, mm -hmm. a different spectrum, like, expensive. Yes. You feel the weight. I feel, person. I feel the weight on my body of expectation. 
One time I didn't sleep for like 48 hours. It was on like hour 40 and I gave <laughs> hour 40. this person I barely knew. I gave her a laptop. It was like a $600 laptop. And uh, the next day I woke up and I was like, yeah, that was crazy. I need that back. And, and she gave it back. She was super cool about it. I told her I hadn't slept. So that's sleep deprivation. The that's sleep deprivation. It you're really drunk. is. You're really drunk. It really is. Drived. It's why they tell you you so, can't drive if you haven't slept. It's better to pull over so and take dangerous. micro naps. Yeah. And then I wrote this letter to this girl, Sophie. But it was a crazy 48 hours. <laughs> Nonetheless, I think we agree on this one. AITA for taking all of my neighbor's plants. I'm I'm ready. I think I think I, think I could go. No assholes here on this. I feel like especially with the edit. I know I know a lot of you people want some grace for the bipolar, and I definitely don't. I never thought that she was an. I never thought that she was the asshole for asking for them back. She had a right to ask and a right to send the husband over. I, I never thought she was the asshole. That's where I'm going with it too. Because also like especially with the update, for me, I just assumed it wasn't like rudeness. It was just like a not yet. I forget if there was like a super amount of time that has passed by, but it's just like she can't hide. I don't think she'll hide and cower forever behind the husband. Yeah, I didn't I didn't super read it as rude. It seems like she was embarrassed. That's how OP characterizes it. So she was embarrassed. Yeah, it's She's, like one of those things. Look at her. Give her a couple days and yeah. she'll be over being like, hey, yeah. thanks for the pastries and the hundred dollar gift card. That was really nice. <laughs> and maybe it brought them brought them together yeah. in the end. All right, guys, please rate, review, subscribe. Join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash A-I-T-A pod. Over 130 bonus episodes, a vibrant Discord community. Lots of fun on there. Here we go. A-I-T-A for eating ice cream directly out of the tub. I'm currently staying with my in-laws. Before we came to visit, my mother-in-law asked me what pregnancy cravings I was having because she wanted to make sure they had them for me. I mostly crave chocolate fudge brownie ice cream and they bought a lot of it for me. I was eating it directly out of the tub since it never lasts more than two days max and nobody else was eating it as far as I was aware. My mother-in-law's goddaughter has been here for a few days now too and she saw me eating the ice cream from the tub and told me I was being gross because somebody else could have wanted some and I should use a bowl instead of just eating it directly from the tub. I told her I was going to eat it all anyway, and she accused me of being greedy. I started crying because we kept arguing over it, and she was making me feel awful. My husband saw me crying and was furious with her. My mother-in-law has been trying to smooth things over between everybody, but my husband is still angry at her, and she's still angry at me because she thinks I cried on purpose to make him angry at her. AITA. The one girl accusing sounds like the gaslight queen. The one saying to not like, why don't like, why don't you just put it in a different receptacle? Yeah, girl, who cares? It's not yours. It's mine. I bought like, I'm definitely that person. If I buy it and I know I'm going to drink it, I'm going to drink it out of the container. I'm going to eat it out of the container. I Mind think your so. Business. They, and they not only bought it for her, they bought it for her in the capacity of being pregnant. I, I think we right. do consider the pregnant a special class that deserves special treatment. Ooh. I don't always. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Oh, go on. I don't always. Um, do I think that we should always like offer our seats to like folks who are pregnant? Yeah, absolutely. Because they are carrying like a lot of extra weight. Yeah. But to the same token, like if, if people with mental illnesses got to rein that in, I don't care about the hormones running around your body. You got to act like a normal person when you're out in public. Retweet. That's how I Fair feel point. about it. That may be a hot take. Uh, I may be canceled here, uh, but that's how I, I feel about know. it. And also, that was your choice. For the most part, you choose to get pregnant. I guess. I yeah. I guess. But I also kind of feel like you know you're making a, a whole human inside you. It's yeah, that's your choice. Deal. No, it's your choice. But I, it's, people don't ask to be born. Well, but you were made once, Lily. And I didn't ask to be here. Yeah, but Say you're are you happy to be here. Back. No, you're not happy to be no, here. No, I was brought here truthfully <laughs> against my will. When I came out the womb, yeah. I'm telling you, I did not cry. I blinked. I looked around in disgust. Oh my and blinked. god. <laughs> Yeah, no. Are you truly. an antinatalist? Uh, not fully, not for other people. That's just how I believe. So you are an antinatalist, but you're saying it's not wrong for me to have kids. Other people can have kids because that's their choice. But like, yeah, I, no one has to be born. And I think if if you choose to be pregnant, yeah, out in their self, like if you their choose self, to be pregnant, Fuck. like you are, you are making that choice. If you chose it, you are yeah. making that yeah. choice. You are doing that for yourself, for your family, for whatever your reasons. They're all valid and good reasons. But is she crying, Lily? You're on her for crying? No, I'm not. Okay, I, I mean, actually, you know what? I'm not on her for crying because 
again, she does have hormones. If tears start, yeah, that's normal. That's okay. I'll cry at the drop of the hat, and I'm not pregnant. But the thing is, I think it's just, <laughs> it's it's a it's a, a little bit of a bridge too far for me, where it's like I'm crying and she's making me feel bad and I'm pregnant. It's like you can cry, that's fine. But like you, this isn't the biggest deal. No, it wasn't that big of a deal. This is, this is not huge. That's my issue. If somebody cries, they're they're begging for like soften up, right? Oh, I'm sorry. You know, give them a hug, whatever, mm -hmm. right? That's all Definitely. it is. It's not that big of a deal. My issue, actually, and I think my problem, my biggest problem with the person in this story is the husband. Yeah. I okay. <laughs> like the goddaughter, admittedly, she's like, oh, I can't. I have some ice cream being kind of shitty about it, but whatever. She's a kid, right? Right? Goddaughter? Yes. Probably younger. The husband then does this crazy, the husband's angry at her, which is like, Already disproportionate. I don't think this situation warranted anger. Right? I think this could have been a calm explanation. Yes. Hey, hey, Susie, she's pregnant. That's her ice cream. Relax. Yes. And, and, but then, then, mother in law has been trying to smooth things over and husband is still angry at her. This is him. What is he doing? There's no reason to be angry anymore. Yeah. No, he didn't need to start a fight. He sounds a little bored, honestly. <laughs> yeah, right? He's got nothing going on. All the attention's on my pregnant wife. <laughs> I yeah, want some yeah, on me. You're right. No, <laughs> seriously, though. You, yeah, I think you're right. I think that could be very well true. It's like when you see something, like something in front of you, like you're like, I see wrongdoing. I'm going to get in there, virtue signal a bit, and make <laughs> yes, it about me. Yes. Hey, that's wrong, buddy. And it would have been able to be handled like better if you did not get involved i have to like yeah. actively stop myself from stuff like that i see people being horrible in public i'm like bite your tongue walk away because it's not going to be better with your involvement will <laughs> like, the um, messy person yeah. in me comes back out and i'm like do i want to cuss this person out right now don't do it step yeah. back well cussing Take someone out is not a good way to address the situation jordan <laughs> yeah. that's an escalation yeah. <laughs> You guys are like, the yeah, don't take over. Yeah. Yeah. Let me pull out a gun. That'll help. <laughs> oh Top God. comment. Jane radar. YTA. I'll be in the minority here. I find it confusing and insulting that pregnant women aren't expected to act like adults. Like I think we should be readily forgiven for not being considerate when we are growing a whole human in their body. But I don't think that we get a pass from acting like considerate adults. You're putting your germs in a tub of ice cream. No, in her, it was her tub ice of ice cream, her tub. Eat as much as you want, but give someone the option to have some if they want. They do have the option. They have the option to have all they want. It's just that she's using a package because it's her package. You can't help the tears because your hormones are haywire, but you could just move on from this and use a bowl. It doesn't have to be a big deal. It's her ice cream. She doesn't have to give away any of it's it. It's her ice cream. It like that. It was bought for I her. Feel like my, it was bought for her. I, yeah, like my like bestie comes at me because I do the same thing. I like drink juice right out the thing. It's not for anyone else. It's, it's mine. Juice. It's for me. No it's one else is going to drink it. And let me ask and you, if you, are you a pulp some, guy? Sorry. Absolutely not. Do oh, I seem like really? a pulp guy? I don't even want your juice then. I don't even <laughs> want your juice, Jordan. I love pulp. Are you an Ooh. extra pulp? I love extra pulp. You're an extra. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You wouldn't get that as so an you like, list. So you like eating and <laughs> drinking at the same time. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, I like that. So you like texture. Mm, 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 foul beast. No, <laughs> foul man. beast. Ow. Why did that hurt my feelings? <laughs> Top descending comment. S bake 89. I have to disagree with most people. I'm going to say NTA because that ice cream was bought specifically for OP. Mother-in-law asked what she was craving and it was that ice cream. If goddaughter or anyone else wants them, they can request it to or go get it themselves. I, Period. I, I, I mean, we took some shots at pregnant women here, but I, I honestly think <laughs> you did. You did. <laughs> AITA for eating ice cream directly out of the tub. I think we're all on the same page. This is a this is N, uh, this is NTA and the husband is yes. And I could pin a a soft YTA on the goddaughter. Well, why don't you share it? It's like it's hers. Well, yeah, no. Goddaughter said she was being gross. No, that's not gross. No, it's not. I mean, I know everyone has a different threshold for what is like gross, what is germy. I do not believe that is gross at all. It's I don't know. If I saw Jordan 
drinking his disgusting pulp free Tropicana, which is sugar water. I wouldn't be like, oh, that's gross that you're drinking it out of the packet. That's crazy. How is that gross? He's just drinking it. Wait, so you're <laughs> you're on like the fact that the, it, like the pulp has fiber, so the like the sugar from the juice isn't hitting you as hard. Oh, I don't. I wasn't. I, oh, you're I just doing. Sorry, I I, I focus too <laughs> much into an know. obscure detail. That's my I just. Bad. I mean, well, the <laughs> argument that it's gross is, I guess, you're creating a risk, right? Because if you if you put it back in the fridge and they're a little fridge thief, you know, then I'm like at Jordan's house and I'm just oh, pour myself mm-hmm. some OJ, and you're like. Hey, dude, OJ's not really for public consumption. I'm an asshole, right? Like, I, I'm the one assuming things about the fridge policy. Like, you are, you are the fridge thief. Yes. Yes, that would be a fridge thief. So, that's to me, your own fault. There's no grounds to call this gross. And I will give the goddaughter a soft ding for that. Maybe she's used to raiding the fridge at grandma's house. Yeah, she's a kid. She's never bought her own fucking yeah, thing. Yeah, never ever, bought her own know? thing. It's always been her ice cream in exactly. the fridge. And now for the first time. Her, her, her. It's someone else's ice cream. Okay. Disgusting. D- disgusting. <laughs> what did you call me? A isn't foul it? beast. <laughs> foul beast, isn't it? <laughs> a foul beast, isn't it? <laughs> NTA for eating ice cream directly out of the hot tub. We all agree it's NTA and those other two people are. Guys, please rate, review, subscribe, join us on Patreon. Here we go. We're going to wrap this thing up with AITA for asking that my BF switch meals with me when I don't like what I've ordered at a restaurant. I've been friends with my BF for years, actually together for about three months now, and I'm so happy we're finally clicking after being flirt buddies since middle school. We're 25 now. Well, it's time to start acting like it and not tell people those details. Whenever we go out to eat, (laughs) he always orders the most basic thing cheeseburger plain ketchup on the side with honey mustard to dip his fries he actually loves exotic food but he says that menus and making choices stress him out so he doesn't want to put thought into it (laughs) who are these people (laughs) i love trying exotic things and to me that's the reason to go out to eat my issue is things always look and sound better than they turn out and i decide that i actually just wanted a burger so usually i'll ask him if he'll switch with me and he always does and he never complains Most of the time, he even says how good the food was. To me, it's a win for both of us. It gets him out of his comfort zone, and we don't waste food. We met up at a sports bar, but they were having a calamari special, which sounded really good. He ordered a cheeseburger, as usual. I wasn't feeling the calamari when it came out, so I asked if he'd switch. He said no. I asked him why not and said, said, you know, I don't want mine to go to waste. He said, then you shouldn't have fucking ordered it. He then went into a tirade and said, I treat him like a garbage disposal. He's a grown man. I'm being immature. Don't pin my crap on him, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It sounded like it was a rehearsed speech. He said, maybe it was since I, quote unquote, insist on stealing his food every time he goes somewhere. Then I started crying and he said, don't start that bullshit with me. Have both meals. And he got up and walked out. He has a caller texts me and it's 6 a.m. And I honestly thought he would call to apologize by now. I called my sister and quote, you're an asshole for waking me up at 530 and he's going to see you asking as insisting. That's really crappy of you to put the answer, that pressure on him. Unquote. That's what the sister said. A-I-T-A. Absolute. And you know what? Maybe I'm reaching, but this sounds like it's a girl and a gay bestie. <laughs> like the, the rehearsing of the lines. <laughs> He's been working on absolutely, it. I've been in this situation. Absolutely <laughs> not. I know what this is. Do you? Mm-hmm. So, okay. So one, this, this has, this is a concept I talk a lot about on the pod. Jordan, and I I want to see if you think this might be a gay bestie thing, which is internalized unassertiveness. So basically, people get walked on time and time again, and then one day they finally snap, and all this internalized, that all because all he had to say was, no, babe, no. But he never did, right? That's what she said, that he never complained. So after a hundred times of giving her the damn burger and eating the dog shit calamari from a sports bar, kill me with a gun... He goes on this tirade. Are is this a thing? Is that is that what you're seeing as the gay bestie trait here, or is it the rehearsing? Definitely, <laughs> it's. <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, now, because like this is someone doing that, like just unloading after a situation like that happened with my bestie, but I was the gay bestie. I mean, I feel like it's the rehearsing that it's giving the gay bestie. <laughs> Also, if you're rehearsing anything, I'm I'm cutting you off right after that. That is weird. If you're going to have all this animosity towards me, then one day snap out. Girl, kick rocks. 
yeah folders. rehearsing is I, I i catch myself rehearsing sometimes and uh it's i i gotta shut that down it's bad and it, and like it never goes the way like that you rehearsed it and then you're just sitting here stuck on stupid like uh, i didn't think you were gonna say that yeah, I mean, I don't say anything I'm rehearsing. I kind of think of it as like venting alone, but mm-hmm. it's definitely, yeah, if you're doing it and you're actually rehearsing, so you're practicing for the big moment, like you gotta, you gotta lock that in. You gotta look, you, you gotta take a look at yourself in the mirror. What are you really doing? Yeah. Here? It's interesting. I'm yeah. the opposite. I'll have the conversation and then I'll be alone and just say it again to myself and be like, you could have said that, I guess, but no. Like, yep. mm-hmm. Same. <laughs> like, so you're Same. after the convo, you are like, I should have said X, Y, Z. Not even should have. It's like, I'll be doing something else. And then the convo will creep into my head and it will start mm-hmm. replaying. And mm. I, I do think about it. Like I think about them, like my responses and if they could have been improved upon. Definitely. I feel like I never said enough or like I was trying to spare somebody. So I'm not like cutting too deep. And I'm like, you know what? Nah, fuck that. I should have gone off on you. Like you were being shitty. Oh, I see. So it was kind of like you got walked on in this convo, and then you're like, I had a lot more assertive things mm-hmm. to say. You guys actually sound like you could do for some rehearsing a little bit. Some prep. <laughs> Get your shit together a little, you know? I feel like I'm always trying to, since I was the messy person before, I'm always just trying to tread lightly. I'm not trying to cut too deep. I've done it too many times. I've heard too many people. So now I'm just like, okay, you can walk on me for a little bit. It's fine. But one day I might cuss you out. <laughs> And it's gonna hurt. I'm so scared of a Jordan cuss out. You've referenced it a couple <laughs> times, and like I just don't want to be on the receiving end of that at all. I already got what did I get? Foul swine. What was I? Foul beast. <laughs> Foul beast. Foul that, beast that was a good one. Indeed. That has no curse words in it. Hurt. No, oh, and it, Lord, it's devastating. One, one th- time I called somebody a beast with no neck in high school, and her cousins <laughs> came after me, and I was just like, her cousins. I, mean, I, I love her cousins. <laughs> all of them. All the cousins. <laughs> all the cousins are <laughs> here. Like, I think it was like her brothers and three cousins like surrounded my lunch table. Like, did you write this note? And Beast with no neck was highlighted. I was like, I did. I did. I did. I take credit for that. That was my poem. I love mm-hmm. that. Am I actually kind of proud of it? I mean, it's a great line. I have a question about OP because she, I, she engages in some picture painting. She's like, I love exotic foods. Like, that's why I go out to eat. Hey, you know what? No one who likes exotic foods calls them exotic, exotic foods. foods. That's a very odd way. One of the lines that I cut was, "That's the whole point about going out to eat. It's so exciting." Like, <laughs> that, the literally quoth OP. That's what she said. Not wrong, but and every single time. Well, I can't say every single time, but from her description, it's she often opts for the burger. It's like she often switches with him. Like if she doesn't like exotic food. I was about to say, it looks like she's trying to like for the Instagram. She just needs to post it, but she doesn't eat it. Do you know what she needs to do? She needs to go out with friends and everyone orders an entree and they order six side plates. Yeah. And then everyone tries everything. That's the, if you like exotic foods quote, like that's fried what, calamari from yeah. a sports bar is exotic. Well then no, from a sports <laughs> call bar, me the it fucking wasn't, tiger king. No. What it, is going on? This is the thing. If you get calamari from a sports bar, it's not, it's not squid. It's not octopus. Yeah, what what is it? it? Meal. No, it's um, it's pig anus. The rings. <gasps> no. Yeah, Please Google it. Is that true? Google it. Oh, cheap calamari. Google cheap it. Cheap calamari, pig anus, Snopes.com, calamari made of pig rectum, a charming urban legend. Get out of town. Come Rump on. faker. Oh, think about a pig. It's a little tiny anus. <sighs> I mean, maybe it's a big. I mean, calamari is kind of small. It's not really. Calamari is small. It can be. Yeah. <laughs> it's just I don't know, man. I don't think when they're selling it at a restaurant for like eleven twenty seven in the fried. Midwest. Yeah, it's fried food. Yeah. They just fry the shit out of it. It's mainly you know bread. Yeah, fried and really rubbery bullshit. little yeah, exactly. bits. I don't like calamari exactly. personally. Oh my god. I've, I've only had bad. Clearly, best. I've only had bad. Okay, clearly. yeah. I feel hey, like, you I thought feel it was like a pig's butthole, so what you you haven't had you haven't had good shit. <laughs> but, not calamari wise, absolutely. <laughs> How how have you told other people that that it's pig butthole? It's something that it's people kind of have told me. a violent thing to bring up at dinner. I wouldn't not, no, it's not like you know what? Every time I see someone <laughs> at a restaurant or a sports bar eating calamari, I just saddle on up to them at the bar. Yeah. Like I grab a drink. I'm like pig anus, nice. No, never. I'd never bring no, that up while yeah, someone was eating. What? Like, 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think there's kind of two ways of reading that, of reading this, which is one that she's picture painting, and I definitely see some of that. So she's she's she is doing this. She claims she's not insisting and that she's asking, but maybe their relational dynamic is that an ask is pretty much an insist. Or like we don't know what she does. She might be like super dramatic if he says no. He can't feels like he can't say no. Yeah, because they've also she said they've been flirt buddies since middle school. So this has been <laughs> oh, so like, it's not a gay bestie. Yeah, they, they're no, like, they're they together. were dating and they broke up after this post. Like, oh. OP updated being like, guess I was the asshole because he broke up with me today. But um, this has been a long time in the making. This seems like a wear down situation. Like, this guy never wanted to be anything but friends. Maybe. And she wore him down from age 12 to age 25. Is that how you, old you are in middle school? Sure. Like, age Why 12 not? to yeah, 25. 12. This is a 13 year wear down. And he, and he snapped. I, I, that adds That's up speculation to me. on my, yeah, that uh, adds on up my to point, me. But. Objection, Your Honor. Speculation. <laughs> Overruled. <laughs> we believed in it. Top descending comment says, ESH, him for not communicating earlier, how much this pissed him off, and uh, you for doing this all the time. I, I mean, I think if it was truly a thing, like you had this couple dynamic and it was genuinely cool, then it's genuinely cool. But like, I, I just, I suspect that if, if he was like, uh, yeah, I don't know if I want to trade, she would be like, please. And then he'd be like, fine. And she's saying yeah. that she doesn't insist, but it's like, yeah, that is annoying. That's annoying. And it's like, he doesn't want to like, I don't know. I'm assuming like if he's the type of person to just go along with it, to make her happy, he would definitely like just pick up on the pattern and just start doing it every time. It's sad. And also just YTA for having horrible taste in food. This isn't eating exotically. This is disgusting. No. Also, why are you not looking at the menu before you go to the restaurant? I feel like that's the first thing that I do. Bingo. That's how I can tell you're an eater. You're a true blue. I love it. I love it. Let's look it up. Let's come up with a strategy. <laughs> and let me say this, guys. I don't know if I've said this publicly. I play an app-heavy game. I think a lot of a lot a lot of novice food people, they're looking at the entrees. Those are always gotcha. Forty dollars for a fucking food. Mm -hmm. Ridiculous. The appetizers are usually half the price, but they're not half the food. They're like five eighths yep. of the food. So there's mm -hmm. a slight value gain there. Order a shit ton of apps. And the apps are always just as good as the, as the entrees. Almost always, you know? I play an app heavy game and I win almost every time. Yeah. Yep. Seattle Space Needle, this was destructive. Four top. We ordered every appetizer, spent less money than if we each got an entree. We couldn't move after we left That's it. Amazing. It was delicious. That's really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm it's like every time you go to Applebee's at like after nine o'clock, I am ordering everything. Mm. Give me the mott sticks. Give me the spinach and artichoke. Give me the wings. It's cheap. It's cheerful. Yeah. I'm full. It's cheap, it's cheap. I love it. <laughs> I mean, I want to make fun of you, but that was just too. That was just too. That was genuine. That was what? too genuine. I, I live like well, for the Applebee's. You really, for the cheap he and really cheerful stands too. the Applebee's. I, I can't make fun of a guy who likes Applebee's that much. That used to be he in Berkshire County. It was one of the only like not local. It was like the only like commercialized place we had in high school. We'd go there after being in plays. <laughs> that's something you said. Let's go to the only commercialized place. <laughs> yeah, as a teenager, that's exactly what I said. But yeah, no, truly. So you know what? I'm not here to hate on the Applebee's. You really love. A I wish I loved something as much as you love Applebee's. Jordan. Honestly, Applebee's and Chili's. Oh my God, oh it's a crazy God. You're so throwing in good. another one. Okay, I can't deal with it. Southwest and they're like the same. Are you they're kidding? like the same restaurant. Yeah, they're the same thing. <laughs> but like Chili's is, you know. <laughs> he didn't even I disagree. <laughs> Chili's is nicer <laughs> than Applebee's. It is, without a doubt. Oh, wow. Well, you know, it. it's just a little. Let me put on my black tie. Jordan is indeed shimmying. He's he's shimmying for the camera. You know, just a little. Just a little AITA for asking that my BF switch meals with me when I don't like what I've ordered at a restaurant. Actually, I don't really know where I am on this. Uh, I think she is. I think she, I I think she's the asshole. You think she's the asshole? I think it's no. a I think it's a YTA situation. Mm -hmm. I don't think anyone should assume that something is someone's default every single time. I think relationships should consistent, like it's not like you constantly have to be in back and forth with one another, but I think it should always, it's, it's not a fixed thing. It's something that ebbs and flows. So I don't think like, this is our routine. I order something crazy. He orders a burger. I eat his burger. Like, I don't think that should be a fixed thing. Okay. I, I think you're right. 
I think there's enough charges on OP. I mean, all we have on him is that most of the time he even says how good his food was. But to me, that's probably part of the picture painting. And this was a meltdown, but I'm with you guys. All right. AITA for asking that my BF switch meals with me when I don't like what I order at a restaurant. We agree. It's YTA. Jordan, mm -hmm. thank you so much for joining us today. Tell these people uh, where they can find you. Um, you know, on the Tiki Takis at Uchiwali or your, um, your Hanius. All right. We will, we will put links in the description to both the TikTok main and what's the one called? The burner troll the account. Burner. That's what you call it. The troll account. Is that what you call it? I, I call it a shit posting account. Anybody. Shit posting. Is I call it, it a shit posting. posting. Shit posting. Mm -hmm. All right. It's like Definitely. the Finsta of TikToks, you know? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. See, that's too There's like really me. no set content. It's just. It is what it is. And what do we call the Barb's? Who are the who are the Barb's fans of? The Barb's are the Nikki fans. Nikki. Oh, wait, fans. we can only say it one more time. I, I swear know, to God, out. they're gonna pop are we up. Out? Oh my God. Yeah, we are getting docs. <laughs> they're gonna come House in the. They're gonna down. come in the apartment. Jordan, thank you so much. This was uh, this was an absolute blast, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Thank you for having me.